So today we're gonna to be talking about one of the most unfortunate things to happen in the automotive industry. What happens when your dealership goes out of business? How do you protect yourself as a consumer? How do you protect yourself if you're a client, if maybe you have a consigned vehicle with them? What are some of the telltale signs? And how can you protect yourself from stuff like this happening in the future? Now, I've done a video like this before in the past, so I go ahead and redo this one with these current events from this particular auto group. Now, before I start, I wanna go ahead and make a disclaimer. This is all allegations are alleged. We don't know anything for certain. It's all up in the air right now, but I wanted to make a video to kind of put people's minds at ease and let people know about the process. So today we're gonna to go over, like I said, some of the signs of what to look for. And one of the bigger things, I wanna talk about how a dealer operates. Because I think a lot of you guys will be surprised on how dealers operate and how the flow of cash goes and why a lot of dealers get in trouble. So if you're new to the channel, my name is Lucky. I'm with Automotive Life. I've been an automotive expert for the last 20 years. I've owned multiple dealerships, rental car companies, automotive repair shops, and this channel is all about helping educate not only dealers and people in the automotive industry, but also regular people and consumers like yourself. So if you could do me a huge favor and gently squeeze the like button for YouTube algorithm, and also find more amazing people like yourselves and enjoy automotive content. Also, please consider subscribing. We do post three times a week, so make sure you click the notification bell. And without any more shameless plugging, let's get into the video. So first off, let me say that any events like this is extremely unfortunate for all parties involved, whether you're a customer, consumer, client, a bank, or even the dealership itself. It hurts everybody all the way around. It is not an easy situation to deal with. Now, to give you guys a little bit of a better grasp on how the situation works and how dealers fall into these pitfalls and headaches, I'm gonna explain how a dealership actually works. Now, we're gonna go in a very small condensed thing, uh, so this way we don't go too long. I don't have a 45 minute video, but it's very important for me to explain this stuff to you to see why dealers you know, do some of the things they do and how they can basically get into trouble extremely quickly. So first we're gonna talk about a Highline dealership and an exotic car dealership. Both of these dealers are extremely high risk and they're more likely to fail compared to traditional dealerships. The reason why is capital. A lot of people ask me, hey Lucky, how do I get into the business? How do I sell exotic cars? How do I sell Highline cars? First thing I ask them, do you have a million dollars in cash? If they say no, don't do it. Not saying a million dollars in credit, not a million dollars in credit cards, has to be cash. You run out of liquidity extremely fast when it comes to these types of cars. Now I'm gonna give you a quick synopsis why. One of the biggest things that kills dealers is what's called a flooring line, which is a line of credit that dealers use to purchase cars. And the way it works is not like traditional lines of credit, there's a lot of fees, high interest, and short term. And I'm gonna give you a quick breakdown of how it actually works. So let's say you go to the auction and you see this beautiful Bugatti, you know, just for reference. And this Bugatti costs, let's say $300,000 at the auction. And you're super excited, you love this Bugatti, you think you could sell this thing for $350,000 and you can make uh, 50K extremely quickly. So you go to the auction and you purchase this car. You get it back to your shop, you're super excited, you're ready to fix it up, but now the clock starts ticking. When you purchase this car on your line of credit, which is your flooring line, depending on what kind of line of credit you have, there's gonna be a lot of fees, a lot of interest, and a short time amount to pay off. Now, if you have good credit and you're able to finance 100% of this vehicle on your flooring line, more than likely your fees and your monthly uh, principal pay down is gonna be much, much higher. So when you purchase this car, first you have what's called a flooring fee. So something like $350,000 could be anywhere from $1,500 to $3,500, just depending on how your contract's set up. So there's automatically added onto your contract from day one. And whether you keep this car for two days or 30 days, they're gonna charge you the full 30 days of interest and whatever fees it's included. Let's say that's $2,500 in fees. Now, depending on your floor plan, you're gonna have what's called a principal pay down. The flooring companies and the lines of credit make you do this to protect themselves from depreciation because every time you purchase a car at the auction, it's a depreciating asset. It's not worth as much as it's gonna be in 30 days from now. Now this market's a little weird, prices have been going up, but traditionally that's how they're set up. So to offset that risk and mitigate it, they charge you a principal pay down, which could be five, 10, and 20, and 30%, depending on your contract. So let's say it's 20%. So you buy this car, you're super excited with all the fees and all the flooring. If you don't sell this in 30 days, it's gonna cost you anywhere from 15 to $32,000 to pay off in the first month. 
That's just the principal payment. And then you got maybe another 60 days before you have to pay the full amount. So now you're in a rush to sell this because you don't want to make a payment for 30 something thousand dollars. But let's say that it takes you 31 days to sell this. You pay your principal payment and your fees, which is let's say $25,000 and you sell the car and you make, let's say an estimated $30,000 of profit. Well, you can't just have one car. You're always going to have two, three, four, five cars. So what happens is the day he bought this Bugatti, he went out and bought three other cars or four other cars for the same amount, maybe $200,000, $300,000. So now he has multiple payments of fifteen dollars to $30,000, and they're due every 30 to 45 days. Now this is the pressure that's being put on dealers, and this is why they tend to go out of business, because even though you made $30,000 profit, you got $100,000 in payments popping up really shortly. And if you don't have the liquid capital, you're always running behind. And so what happens is, let's say this guy buys it, and the bank deal is sent to Bank of America. So the customer leaves with the car, you get the check from Bank of America, but instead of paying off the flooring company, which is your line of credit, or let's say this is a consumer's car, you know, instead of paying them off, you pay off your lines of credit because they're calling you like a bill collector for the payment. Now, once the bank gives you the check, most dealers will float this. They'll pay their other bills and try to basically rob Peter to pay Paul. As soon as they get funded on another car and the flooring company's squawking for the first car's payment, they'll try to slide that under the table and somehow try to make it work with another chunk of money or pay another monthly payment and try to push off the bank. This happens a lot and this is what gets dealers into trouble. So now, like I said, let's say you have two, three cars that sell and they're both gone. They're all gone. The, the dealer is taking the money and pay these high interest payments on these big lines of credit so they can show off to their friends that they have exotic cars, they have luxury cars, and this is what they want to sell. And now they're left with nothing. They're constantly chasing sales to pay off their lines of credit so they can eventually get even with the high line and exotic cars that they're selling. And that's what happens. These guys get in trouble. They run out of money extremely quickly because you could have two months that are bad, maybe three months, and you're talking three, four $400,000 gone out the door, not including late fees, penalties, and stuff like that. And so that's what happens to these dealers. They get in trouble. Now, unfortunately, when this happens, most dealers are not honest with their lines of credit. They don't tell people what's going on. So what I tell every dealer, if you're having issues with paying your flooring lines or lines of credit, if you sold a bunch of cars and you don't have the money to pay them off, Tell your foreign company and work with them. Say, hey, look, can I make a payment arrangement? Can I do something like this? It's always better to come honest and upfront with them and work with them before they actually find out. Because what happens to dealers is if you sell a car and don't pay for it, it's called selling out of trust. So now they're worried that the customer may get screwed, the bank may get screwed, and they may get screwed. So the first thing the banks do is they go, they show up and they take all the cars off the dealership's floor. So if you ever like drove by a dealership and you see all the cars taken, a lot of times that's why. So with this particular auto group, that's may, that may what happened with a lot of the vehicles that were on the floor. Because when you sign a contract with the flooring company, they have the legal right to seize any vehicles that are on your lot. So if this is Mr. John Smith and he can sign this car to me and I have paperwork for it, more, more than likely these companies probably snatched it from them and the consumer actually has to talk to his lenders to see if he can get the car back. It's going to be a legal battle because the bank doesn't want to give it up because it's an asset. The customer is going to want it back because they're going to want the money and they may have gotten a customer to pay cash for it and he's not gotten the car. So now you got a three-way tug of war. So that's one of the things you can do. So if you're one of the consumers that's lost their vehicle, find out who their vendors and who they owe money to. There's a few different lines of credits. They're not too hard to find out. Nextgear, uh, AFC Capital, um, uh, Ally, Jeez, there's like seven other ones. I can't remember the names of them, but they're bigger flooring companies. But you can find this out if you go to the DMV and you file a complaint. File the complaint, find out who it is, and ask them if they have your vehicle. Now, here's what happens on the other part. What is if you're one of the customers that purchased a car and you, you know, wrote a check for cash and you lost the car? Unfortunately, there's nothing you can do. When you buy these exotic cars and Highline cars, I always tell everybody, go through a bank. Even though you have the money to write a check, 
you always want to go through a bank for financing. And here's the reason why. And this is how you protect yourself. If I buy this Bugatti for you know $300,000 from a dealer, and even though I have $300,000 in the bank, I'm going to buy it through my bank. What happens is I'm buying protection. As soon as I, I buy it from the dealer and I drive away with it, the, the dealership has to send the title for this car to my bank. And once my, my bank gets it, then now we all have a legal binding agreement. I have to make payments on this car. The dealer has to you know, give the title to the bank and the bank has to provide me with title when I pay off the vehicle. Now, if the dealership never sent the title to the bank and you have this car and you don't, you're not gonna get the title, the customer doesn't wanna give it up, you could file a complaint. Or if you wanna help out the person, let's say this particular customer didn't receive payment for this vehicle. This is how everybody can team up and save the day. So if you bought this through a bank, you're protected by the bank. You can say, look, you got no proof of title. This is not my real car, cancel the loan. The bank has no choice. They have nothing saying that the bank legally owns this car. So what happens? The consumer gets the bank debt freely off and cleared. The car will go back to the original owner Unfortunately, the bank will get screwed, but most banks have insurance on their loans for stuff like this. This actually happens a lot. This is not something rare. We're talking on a monthly type of scale. Even here in Las Vegas, there's dealers that go out of business all the time. I've bought in cars from auctions, dealers go out of business. You know, all I do is like, look, I don't want the car anymore. They take it back and then whoever winds up having the title gets the vehicle back. So if the consumers want to team up and if they purchased it through their bank, Go ahead, give the car back, say, I don't want it. Let the original customer know that, that you're giving the car back to the bank. The bank will unwind the deal. The customer will get his car back. And unfortunately, like I said, the bank will get screwed, but it has insurance for that. And that's what it's for. And this is how you get your car back. A lot of these guys suing people and chasing stuff. Unfortunately, if they're that in debt and they've lost that much money, they're probably had a five to $8 million line of credit and they probably owe, I'm guessing three to $5 million. I know there's been a few allegations of supposedly they owe, you know, five, six, seven thousand or seven million dollars. But that's what happens. When you start getting these big chunks of money for these cars and you start floating that type of capital, you could run a deficit extremely quickly. I've seen dealers that had three or four million dollar flooring lines literally go out of business overnight and owe eight million dollars. And you know, a dealership business is based off of credit and based off of trust. The banks trust you to give them the title for this car. So if I sell the customer the car, I'm just selling them the physical piece right now, they leave with it, the bank wires me the money that day, and, but the bank trusts me to provide them with a the title. If they don't do that, the bank gets screwed. So that's why it's a really big thing when it comes to credit and trust. And so when it comes to these exotic and highline cars, this is why so many of these guys go out of business is because all it takes is two, three bad months and they're in a, such a big hole with their flooring lines and their creditors, they can never get out of it. So I usually tell people, if you have issues like this, just give the cars back, call the consumers. You know, you can always give the cars back to the customers. You know, I hate to say this, you can kind of screw the banks because they're insured for it and most times they'll sue the hell out of you, but you don't screw the people. The people have nothing to do with this. They're just innocent bystanders. And on top of that, I heard that allegedly there were some people that brought their cars in for appraisals and they sold them. If they don't have a consignment contract, that is 100% fraud. That guy is going to jail. So it's not the fact of, you know, if that really happened, if if he's gonna get sued, filing bankruptcy is not gonna save you. You are literally uh, intentionally defrauding somebody. So they're guaranteed to go to, to, to the uh, jail, unfortunately, on that one. This actually happened with another Highline dealer here in Vegas where he was doing the same thing. He had like three people buying the same Lamborghini Huracan. He had like a, a, a 458 or 488 uh, Spider that he sold to like three people, so three different banks had a different loan on this one. He sold to three people, all told the same story. Oh, I just got to change the clutch, come pick it up. And so all three of these people showed up at once to pick up the car and mayhem and say, this is my car, no, this is my car. Different banks showing up trying to repo the car. It was a mess. This happens a lot, unfortunately, when it comes to the exotic and highline world. So that's just some of the ways to protect yourself. So please, 
asking a lot of questions. If you're gonna buy a car, especially exotic car, never pay cash. I don't care what they say, if you'll get a better deal, go to your bank, ask them to finance it, put the money in the bank and say, hey, once you get the title, I'll write the check for it. I just wanna make sure that myself is secure because once you write that check, you ain't never gonna get that cash back. If you go through your bank, you at least have a little bit of a buffer and now you have the bank on your side that can either chase you, chase the title, help you produce the title, or whatever else. Now, when you're a consumer and if you bought a car and you paid cash and you haven't received the title, you have a lot of rights. Every state has what's called a consumer advocacy right for purchasing cars. So all you gotta do is go down to your local DMV and say, yes, I purchased a car from this automotive group. They went out of business, they scanned a bunch of people. I need the title for my car. Here's the paperwork, here's the, the bank wire I sent and order a title and file a complaint ASAP. Because if you don't, let's say they, this was a car from a consignment from another person, they could go in file it stolen, and then you come into a legal battle. If you purchase it through the dealer, believe it or not, you have rights, they can't take it from you. You just gotta file for the lost title, file a complaint, and it'll take maybe four months, usually under four months, about 90 days. You can get the title, you'll be good to go. But try to also work it out, like I said, with the previous owner because these people lost their cars too. So anyways, if you guys have any questions, please hit me up in the comment section below. I'll answer every single one. If you've personally been involved, you can go ahead and hit me up on Instagram at automotive.life or if you wanna email me at lucky at automotive life, I'll try to help you guys out as much as I can. But I know this is not a topic that a lot of people talk about, so I wanted to shed some light on this. And I know it seems a little complicated and everything else, but I try to give my best simplified, uh, I guess, version of how to prevent yourself from getting risk and how to watch out for some of this stuff. But anyways, I wanna thank you guys so much for watching. And once again, if you have any questions, hit us up in the comment section below. Until then, we'll see you next time.